Welcome to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. This medical program heard from 7 to 7.30 each Saturday right here on WSBR 740 AM is brought to you by the Adult and Geriatric Center under the medical direction of geriatrician Dr. Andy Mencia. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Mencia, welcome to our show this morning again. This is your show and my show together and you it's uh, very important that we talk about diets because everyone's on a diet now the summer's coming they all want to fit into their sexy uh bathing suits including men including, including men. men the tans yeah, okay. i gotta i gotta fit in my new tan ah, 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 <laughs> my <better>. brazilian tan <laughs> see i knew that you know it's funny we, we, it's, it's really interesting that we yeah, you and I can kid about this all the time, but but when you you I have seen some people who are so fat. I mean, they are obese, and I yeah. see them, and I feel so sorry for them. But you brought up a subject when we were talking before the show that people can lose weight, and then they feel like uh, they've plateaued. And then they're going to do something drastic. Why don't you discuss that whole thing about well, you know, it? I don't understand. The, I didn't know the, that. The physiology of, of uh, weight loss. Basically, the body is used to the way you carry on now. So if you decide you're going to lose 20, 40 pounds, by the time you reach probably around 10 pounds, your body might want to try to plateau. And at that 10 pound, that plateau, what is, tell, what is telling us is that now the internal organs, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your spleen, your lung, they are trying to readjust to the new you, to the lighter you by 10 pound. And then after a little while, then it, once everything is ready, once all the internal organs are ready, if you keep doing what you have been doing, the guy does 10 pound down, then you will go back down and lose another five, eight, or ten pounds again. And again, it will plateau on you. Mm. So every time your body plateau, is your internal organs are trying to readjust. Now, we think of obesity as the big belly or the big butt or the big leg or the big arms. But what we have to think, the fat that have accumulated outside our body is also accumulating around your heart, inside your liver, not around your liver, but inside, being part. That's when we do an ultrasound. We, you know, you get an ultrasound and say, oh, you have a fatty liver. That means a liver that is loaded with fat. That's what a fatty liver means. It's nothing malignant about that. You're never going to get liver damage from a fatty liver. It's just a liver that has fat in it. That fat is going to try to move out of the way now because you are losing fat outside. So when the body is trying to clean the system internally, <clears throat> you have to plateau your weight loss. And then after a while, when all the organs are ready, you will see your weight continue to decline. So... So it's uh, dangerous when you start thinking about the way you said this to be very well, careful. Well, yeah, it's dangerous because a lot of people, when they start losing weight, and, you know, besides being a, a, a geriatrician, I'm, I'm also a grandmaster in Taekwondo. I teach self-defense. I teach exercise. So I'm very much involved into exercise and teaching the class and giving seminar on exercise. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, when... When the body plateau, some people, they are so desperate to lose weight. Desperate. They want to lose it like yesterday. So they start doing drastic things. Like they, what? Uh, some of them will get a, a, a diving suit and put it on and go inside a sauna <laughs> to, make them start, to make them start like sweat. They want sweat to come out. And that's dangerous because sweat, remember that sweat and diarrhea, those are electrolytes. That's sodium, potassium, chlorine. Those are electrolytes your body needs to function. Now we think, oh, but if I lose, if I get diarrhea and I lose a lot of sodium, that's good for me. The sodium, with sodium come everybody else. And your heart needs the calcium to function, need chlorine to function, need potassium to function. And you are losing drastically. You are forcing all this electrolyte out of your way. 
and that drastic loss of the electrolyte can give you a heart attack. It can take your heart from a normal rhythm to atrial fibrillation or some kind of bad uh, arrhythmia uh, that you might need a pacemaker uh, to get your heart back to function or at least to keep it under control. And once you get that pacemaker, it's for life, whether you use it or not. I think maybe this is a good time to tell you that I have always admired what you have done at your center's Because you hire nutritionists. You know, most doctors do not have nutritionists. They'll send you to a nutritionist. You actually employ two specific nutritionists at each one of your centers to help people. And so that's what people should be doing, shouldn't they? Right. Well, you know, when I get uh, my patient, uh, they come to me and they say, Dr. Messi, I want to lose 30, 40 pounds. There are doctors that will charge you privately for that, which I think is ridiculous. Because if I'm a doctor, I'm going to treat high blood pressure. I'm going to treat diabetes. I'm going to treat obesity. I'm going to treat addiction. I mean, whatever you have, you are my patient. I'm, I'm supposed to be there to treat any and everything that you might have. And if it's something that I cannot handle, I should find the right person to work with me and do it. So when it comes to... With obesity, usually come diabetes, the the thyroid gland. Uh, we have done a full show on the thyroid in metabolism, its function of the thyroid and metabolism. Uh, when the person comes to me and they want to lose weight, I say, well, let's do a, a profile. Because since I do holistic and traditional medicine, I want to check all your vitamins. And then I want to check your thyroid, your liver. I want to see where we are before we start the weight loss. And then if I need to, I have an endocrinologist. And endocrinologists, what do they have to do with? They have to do with all of those organs that make us gain weight, like the supradrenal gland, uh, diabetes, the thyroid. So all of those glands, that's what endocrinologists work with. So I get my endocrinology on board on my team to help my patient lose the weight. And I get the dietitian in the team. And I tell my patient, if you go and see a dietitian outside, you're going to pay cash. They don't work. They won't see you for, you know, because you have a Blue Cross Blue Shield or Medicare or what have you, or AARP. They won't see you for that. You have to pay cash. If you see a dietitian in a doctor's office, it's supposed to be covered by the insurance. You should not be paying cash for those dietitians. So the dietitian that work at my office, they work under the insurance. And I tell the patient, don't go and meet my dietitian and then walk away. She's there to become your coach. So you're going to see her. She's going to give you advice. You're going to go home. You're going to try or you're going to go back and say, I didn't try. I don't know. Give me something different. But work, work with her as your coach with regard to diet. Good um, advice. And uh, as a team, then the endocrinologist, myself and the dietitian, then we put things together. Sometimes the patient go for a walk <coughs> and they say, you know, I'm having problem. I have this callus that don't let me walk. Okay, come and see my podiatrist. Let the podiatrist see you. Take care of your feet because if your feet are not good, then you cannot do what you want to do. You, you know, you want to exercise. You want to stay active. Can, can you, <coughs> but can you tell us some success, success stories with but don't name the patients, but yeah. of patients who have come and what your nutritionist has done? Um, one of my most drastic uh, patients that we have worked with, and uh, it was a, a team effort. I mean, the person saw everybody in the office. He was on four medications for diabetes, three uh, blood pressure medication. Medication for arthritis. And he lost about 60 some pounds. So we ended up taking one pill for diabetes, no blood pressure medication, <laughs> nothing for blood pressure, and nothing for arthritis. Because once you lose the weight, you know, the excess amount of weight, you are putting extra strength on the joints. You are, every time you take one step, you are forcing those joints. We extra weight. So 
by losing all the weight, uh, my patient was able to come out from a lot of medication. And to me, that's wonderful. I was so proud of him for, you know, for sticking to the program and, and doing that. And so his food, what changed the way he ate or he had, now he's exercising? I mean, what does a nutritionist do, actually, if a person like that comes to them? What well, they- the, first thing, the first thing that we want to do is to see what is your lifestyle now? What got you where you are today? And people would think, oh, they are pig, they eat. No, some of them is, you know, I'm a, a representative for this company and I travel a lot. So I eat restaurant to restaurant. I cannot sit down and eat a, a, a healthy food because by the time my day ends, it might be 10 o'clock at night, and that's when I have my meal, and then I go to sleep, and I have to be up early the next day to go back to work or catch a plane and then go to the next state or city or whatever he or she is going. Uh, so sometimes you're the, your way of life. And then we try to work around with that because we, you, we don't want you to lose your job. Uh, we want you to be able to perform the way you are performing. But let's take care of you now. And so we will go and say, when you leave the day, let's try to have some meal prepared that you can eat throughout the day between interview or working or whatever you are doing so that you have a small meal throughout the day so you don't have that heavy meal at night. And when you do eat out, try to eat like a salad, something light, so that you have the, when you are at home, that you can eat the right thing. Then you will eat a healthier, full meal. Now, <clears throat> some people feel that, oh, a, a full meal have to be dinner. It depends on the culture. And I travel a lot being the president of the USA Taekwondo Federation and the chairman of anti-doping for Taekwondo. I travel the world. And it's interesting when you go to uh, Korea or China, how the breakfast is served. You know, it's like a big meal. Uh, Argentina, when I went to Argentina, lots of fruits in the morning and cheese. When you go to Italy, you know, the breakfast is humongous breakfast. But then dinner is very light. It's a light dinner that you eat. You know, you go to Spain, you know, you have a heavy lunch. And then you have the hour of siesta where you rest. All the business are closed. From 12 to 1.30, 2 o'clock. If you need anything, go to an emergency room. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody's going to open the door for you. So... When you look at different cultures, it doesn't, a uh, heavy meal, the, the main course, the main meal doesn't have to be dinner. Uh, one of the mistakes that we make in, uh, in our country is that we want to have dessert after dinner. Dessert after dinner is going to be absorbed by your body 100% because you are not going to go jogging at 10 o'clock at night, you're going to go to sleep. You're going to sit down, watch TV, listen to the radio. Uh, I hope you do it in the morning at 7 o'clock on Saturday. Right. But uh, <laughs> listen to the radio, read five. a book. No, no, at 5 in the morning. Read a book, you know, start right. doing things that, that, that doesn't burn any energy. So therefore, all of that sweet, whatever sweet that you take, it will be absorbed 100%. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're going to have dessert at lunchtime, you're still active. You're going to go. You're going to do things. You're washing clothes. You're cleaning the house. You're going to go and visit the friend. You have to go to the pharmacy. You're going to burn those calories. So I'd rather have dessert at lunchtime mm. and not have dessert after dinner because I will gain weight like anybody else if they have dessert after dinner. So those are the kind of things that the dietitian will work with, with the patient and myself. Because when we are in the rooms, a lot of times I see a patient that has a indication of pre-diabetes. They are no full-blown diabetic. They have the gene of becoming diabetic. And that gene is waking up because of the lifestyle. And uh, what I tell them from the, right from the beginning, I say... Before you see the dietitian, I'm going to give you a, a, what, what I call Mencia's diet. 
<laughs> yes. I go Mencia's diet. What's Mencia diet? Lots of sex. I say <laughs> sex diet. <laughs> Before and after. <laughs> no, Mencia's diet is take the starches. And I say, don't change your lifestyle because my patient can be a Chinese, a, a Israeli, a Egyptian, Korean, Indian, different nationality. So, and they have their own culture. They, they, they eat what they eat. So I say, I'm not going to change you, and I don't want you to change. Forget about this American Diabetic uh, Association diet. That's for American. <laughs> Whatever you eat, what I want you to do, the starches, you're going to cut it down by half as of today. So then I tell them, rice, bread, pasta, potato. Four things to remember. Rice, bread, pasta, potato. And I say, I don't care if you are used to six uh, pancake, it's going to be three now. If you eat a full plate of rice, I don't have a problem with that, but it's going to be half. If you have spaghetti, cut down by half. If you have six slices of bread, no, three slices now. Just cut down everything by half. And I tell them, I promise you, if they are pre-diabetic, I say, I promise you, the next time I do your blood test, your number will show that you have no, nobody can say that you have pre-diabetes. So you're not asking them to cut it out. You're asking them to reduce it. The half. volume. Just decrease the volume. Decrease the volume. If they are borderline diabetic, then I go in with the fruits because those are natural sweets. So we say, you know, you have the sweet, the human make, you know, through chemical and what have you. But then you have the sweet that God gives you, and God gave it to you through fruit. That's why we got the apple. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's why we have the apple. See, I knew we'd get that and in there somewhere. And she only ate half of, half of the apple, so, which is good. So take the, the, take the uh, fruits and eat half of the amount of fruits. Because some people... They hear, oh, blackberry, they are good for, your, for you. You have antioxidant. True. But don't eat a gallon of blackberry. <laughs> you know, it's going to give you diabetes. You know, it's supposed to be a handful. And that's it. For the day. <laughs> it's not a handful every half an hour. This, this is really interesting. I think, you know? and, and then I think I better give some. All right. Let me, let me give a little promotion now. If you like what Dr. Mencia says, and everyone does. Um, we have people listen for years and they listen from everywhere because once they go to him, they are a different person. He is just very special. You can hear that on the radio. But let me just give you a phone number. He leaves from our radio show. He rushes. He doesn't just leave. He rushes to his uh, medical center in Fort Lauderdale, the AGI Medical and Dental Centers. And it's at 1608 East Commercial Boulevard. And the phone number is 954-489-1345. If you, he's open on Saturdays, which is an amazing thing. But some, they also have Boynton Beach. You can go there on Hagen Ranch Road. Are they open today? Uh, the dietitian. The dietitian. Is oh, my goodness. Courtney's yeah, working. she's wonderful. She's mm -hmm. a lovely lady. But that number over there is 561-270-6494. But if you call the Fort Lauderdale office, they will help you if you need. Uh, they don't have a front desk. They have a concierge. 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 That's what they do. Now, if you need home visits, that's very unusual that a medical center like Dr. Mencia has founded has home services available for homebound patients. It's really important because people can really start to gain weight being at home. Medicare, most major insurance is accepted. Their website is agifl.com. And Stonewater Med Spa, are they open today for Mother's Day? They are open for Mother's Day, the whole weekend. <laughs> the, this, the whole weekend? Yes. Stonewater Med Spa is over there on uh, Oakland Park Boulevard. And Dr. Mencia is the medical director. And they do everything. They have the salt. What's that? It's that have you ever had the salt treatment yet? I still haven't. I have, I have no to go there. We both should go yeah. there together and see how that works. But I have one of my patients that saying, you know, Dr. Messia, I see your practice. Your, your waiting room is packed. 
your dental room, is, you know, your dental department is running great. Why? Why are you doing home visits? What's with this? You know, you're oh. doing you're doing so well. Why are you doing oh, home visits? I said, let me tell you why. Very important. I say I do it because I promised myself when I moved to Florida, my dream was to build a geriatric center that will cover the spectrum of geriatric care. Because you know, I notice when people practice medicine, if the patient, let's say, God forbid, end up in hospice. I mean, the, you know, death is imminent in a few months. So the primary care doctor say, okay, goodbye, see you. Now you go oh, to a hospice I doctor. It. I know it. And I say, well, that's part of living. Dying is part of living. Hmm. So I say, I will never let my patient go when they go into hospice. And all of the hospice companies in South Florida, they know me. They go like, Dr. Mencia, don't sign him off. Because now they got used to this. They got used to where well, the patient is going to hospital. The primary probably have want nothing to do with this. We're just going right. to take over. That's right. That's what happens. But they know Dr. Mencia, he will never do that. Yeah, good for you. He's still yeah. part of the care of that wow. patient. Good for you. And, uh, you know, I have a patient that had gone into hospice and then come out of hospice. Of course. And we tag right along with our patient care. So when it comes to home visits, people that are actually homebound, why we are not going to take care of that? Those are part of our society. This is part of, you know, this is America. We are a developed country. And, you know, if we have a good things going on, we, you know, our philosophy in our country is less provided to everybody. And I remember growing up in Hawaii, you know, that the doctor would come by the house and would come by the village and, you know, take care of the patient. We grew up with that. So I want to continue those uh, parts of, of care. I know that, you know, and I've told this story so many times that when my mother was so sick, it just killed me that I couldn't have a doctor come because I didn't know Dr. Menzi at that time. But that was so unfair. And I eventually had to pay someone a lot of money just to come and see what's going on with my mother. That's not right, but you, you've you stuck your foot into the water there, and you've been doing it, and I admire you so much for that, Dr. Mency. It's 20, really important. 20 years. I know. 20 years. Isn't really? that amazing? That 20 you're, years. We're going yeah. to 21 years doing this. Yeah, well, you, you made your dream come true, and yeah. I'm really proud of you for doing that. I want to Now, we've been talking about all this other stuff, so how about happiness? Do you uh, love happiness? Are uh, you happy? I'm a happy man. I am too. I'm a I'm happy, happy man. Woman. And uh, I tell you, in my, my staff, I, I am so proud when a stranger comes in, even new patient, they come into the office and they say, everybody here is so happy. <laughs> you know, I come into the office, everybody's in such a harmony, but I start my day every day. And some of my uh, staff, they listen to the, to the program. I start my day every day. First, when I do my meditation before I go to work, I, I write a quote. And it's a quote that has come from my inspiration. I don't Google a quote. I just, from my own inspiration, I think of a motivational thought. And I write a quote. And people will come and clock in and they go and read the quote. <laughs> so the first thing I do, I go to the office before anyone gets there. Or sometimes the office manager will beat me to the clock. But one of us will be there, and I go and I write my quote. Then when the employees start coming in, each one of them, some of them don't like to be hugged, so we keep the distance. Really? Um, but we agree to say good morning. Oh, really? At least, at least we are, yeah, there are people that don't like to be hugged. And, you know, and it's cultural. You know, okay. One of my doctors, he is uh, Vietnamese, and he doesn't, doesn't hug. He just hugged. shake hands. <laughs> Yeah. I just shake hands and, <laughs> and my patient they are used to a hug so when they see him and they're going to go no, 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 no <laughs> shake hands shake hands <laughs> that's funny well you respect that so okay. you respect that's their right. culture Fine. it's the culture uh, Asian bow they do the bow so to them that's like a handshake or, but it's a greeting I do greet all of my patients and I hug and kiss most of my employees to start the day yes and we start the day like that. We start the day by greeting each other. And I tell them, I say, listen, I live home, I live home alone. And when I'm here, this is home for me. You, you guys are like my family. Because we come here first thing in the morning and we spend 
eight to 12 hours together, working together. So this is home for us. So we, we're going to live here. Let's live in harmony and loving each other and helping each other. And let the company grow and you guys let, let you guys grow with the company. And they take the company as their own. You know, they know what the concept is. I do a lot of uh, educational pieces for them. We sit down. I sit the whole group down. And uh, we talk about, you know, greeting the patient, knowing the patient. And I have to, I have to tell you that we've had it. Out of town. No, Richard. <laughs> Richard, Sorry. go go to the bathroom. Out of town. <laughs> go Dr. to the bathroom. Go Poor to the bathroom. Joe Carp is waiting. <laughs> oh to no, talk that's to my us. friend. No, yeah, John Carp. Joe Carp. He does John good Carp, things <laughs> too. <laughs> yes. Doctor Mencia, thank you very much for all your thank good you, advice. Thank you, Anita. Really, thank you. Happy. Everyone has to be happy. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for listening to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. Be sure to tune in each Saturday morning from seven to seven thirty right here on WSBR 740 AM.